Hello everybody, this is Tim here with my last Friday 13th review for the Friday 13th refuck. Um, I got my DVD here for anybody that actually gives a shit about this movie. The back here, once again, for anybody that gives a fuck. Okay, the film is directed by Marcus Nispel, who also did the Texas Chainsaw Massacre refuck. Uh, it looks a lot like that, like the look of the film. Um, the film stars Jared Padalecki from Supernatural, which is a show I really like, but Jared Padalecki has never been a really good actor. Uh, his chemistry with Jensen Ackles on Supernatural is really what helps that show, and the good writing, and, and it helps him, like his acting ability. Um, Jared Padalecki, Daniel Panabaker, uh, Aaron Yu, Amanda Rigetti, Travis Van Winkle, and Derek Mears is Jason Voorhees. It's pretty much the roundout cast here. Special features explore the rebirth of Jason Voorhees for a new movie going era. And additional slash scenes. Killer cut. More suspense, more terror, more Jason, baby. <laughs> Let's get uh, from the producers of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They need to put slash, you know, Texas refuck at the bottom of it so people will know it's not the original film. But Friday the 13th, the killer cut. Let's get into this here. Need me a drink first. <clears throat> Woo, yeah. I gotta have this to survive this, this review here because this film sucks so bad. <clears throat> but to jump into the film here, you get like a one little scene at the beginning of it that condenses the entire first film, where it's like uh, Mrs. Voorhees, his entire killing spree is condensed here, where you get to see her like um, like try, it's not even, it's not Betsy Palmer, so it's an actress of inferior talent who's not as good, and uh, she gets her head chopped off, and the the woman that chops her head off, you know, you never see again in the entire film, so you don't even. You know, Jason, you never even get told that Jason took revenge for his mom's death and killed this woman who actually cut his mom's head off. So you never even know that. So that's, this whole scene feels really useless to me. It's just basically their setup. Well, it's their setup, I get that. But I would have liked, you know, Jason actually getting revenge for his mom's death. Because that would make sense, but that doesn't even happen. <laughs> so, let's drink to that. <clears throat> and this drink helps me exhale the shittiness of this film. Helps me get it out of my system. But, so you got that. I don't really care too much for this film already from the start here. Um, then you see little Jason. He walk over there and like get his mom's machete and get like it, the mom, his mom's fucking necklace. Jason in this film is kind of like Rambo. He kills like this dude with like a fucking bow and arrow, which is kind of neat. Jason's kind of like Rambo in this film, but he has like these fucking under underground tunnels in the movie. Supposed to explain how he gets around everywhere. You don't need that. Jason doesn't need underground tunnels. You don't have to explain everything. Uh, just the idea that Jason knows the area and that's he's lived there his whole life and that's how he knows where to go and everything is enough. <laughs> so you don't need like the underground tunnel explanation and all that shit. You don't fucking need that. But it's there. They gotta explain everything, so you gotta have it there. And Jason's got like his fucking underground system hooked up to where if somebody like hits his trip wire in the camp, he knows that they're there. These bells ring down there and like his his fucking uh, Jason cave, and I'm like, okay, it's a little bit too intelligent for Jason there. One, uh, that's just too much for me right there for the character. That makes him just too intelligent. But anyway, um, he's got a girl. Matter of fact, he's got a girl hostage, like fucking keeping her hostage because she looks like his mom. And I'm like, people might say, well, he he thought that woman in the second film was his mom. But once he saw her head, his mom's head, he knew it wasn't his mom, and he tried to kill her. Tried, tried to kill Jenny. But in this film, he knows she's not his mom, so he tries to kill her. I mean, why wouldn't he try to kill her is what I'm saying. So why the fuck is she still alive and why is she a hostage? That makes no fucking sense. That's so stupid. <coughs> Exhale the shittiness of that scene and drink to it. I'm trying to get plastered. Like the more, the more of this film I think about, I'm trying to get plastered so I'll be able to, you know, release these thoughts of the shittiness of this movie without... You know, having a coronary heart attack or whatever. But uh, anyway. So, beginning of the film here. You got Jason, played by Derek Mears. I hate Jason's look, like his actual face. Looks like fucking Big Mr. Potato Head. Um, you got Jason at the beginning of the film here. You got a character, Wade, who's like this jokester guy. He get, there, All these, these group of kids here are like looking for pot. You get like this group and then you get another group of kids uh, for the next part of the movie. And I prefer this group of kids slightly more than the other group. But the, I still don't give much of a fuck about these guys. You got like the cliche nerdy guy. 
Um, you get like raunchy comedy in here, like they don't know how to write teenage characters, so the comedy comes off as like fucking American Pie style shit, which I don't think fits a Jason movie at all. But people might say, well, it's an update. It's got to be more raunchy, you know, to fit the teenagers of today and everything. And I'm like, I don't know any teenager that acts like this. And the American Pie style shit, I like American Pie, but that's like, that's movie shit. I mean, I don't know anybody who's fucking stupid enough to get in half those situations that those characters did in the later films. But anyway, um, so at the beginning of the film here, you got the people that are looking for pot. Wade is like the first kill in present time by Jason. While this film doesn't pl take place in the 80s, I don't know what the fuck ever. Wade's the first guy to get killed. You got Jason with a sack over his head. And decent scene here. I mean, well, I mean, decent. I mean, well, fucking, let me drink here. <sighs> Shittiness of the film is like blocking my memory here. But um, what I mean is, is that Jason's like look with the sack. I like that. That's decent. I like the, the little sack coming back. But uh, you can't. I can't see like fucking shit in this scene right here where Jason kills Wade. It's like so dark and he just comes charging at him, like swings at him. You couldn't see shit. At least I couldn't. So I'm like fucking useless scene. Um, <clears throat> so you couldn't see anything. Jay, uh, you get a funny scene though where uh, this dude's like fucking his woman doggy style in this tent. And he thinks it's Wade out there fucking around. He's like, dude, if you're out there jerking off, it's not cool. I actually thought that was funny. But at the same time, you get this raunchy, stupid-ass American Pie shit where he's where, uh, Wade's, like, talking to him, trying to tell him about the GPS shit and everything. And his girlfriend's, like, behind him, like, showing him her showing her boyfriend her tits. And she's like, mm, fuck me. Eh. And I'm like, okay, who the fuck does that? And it's such a cliche joke of somebody behind somebody doing something. I'm like, eh. Tar that shit in movies over and over. But, um, so, that dude leaves to go look for Wade. Um, he finds Wade's body, comes back, his girlfriend's, like, fucking hung upside down on a, under her sleeping bag, like, over top of this fire, which is a kind of a cool death. I like this. Reminds me of Fire 13th Part 7, my sleeping bag death, but, like, a new spin on it. That's neat. I like that. So, she gets roasted and cooked there. She's dead. And he gets his leg caught in the bear trap, like Jason set up a trap, which, again, is cool. I like bringing back the trap idea. Um, you got this character, Whitney, who is the one that gets held hostage by Jason because she reminds Jason of his mom or looks slightly like her. Um, they find Jason's, like, mom's head. Her and her boyfriend find Jason's mom, like, fucking head in just, like, the wall instead of, like, with a shrine built to it or anything. It's just, like, in the hole in the wall. And I'm like, lame. Drink to that. <clears throat> Exhale the shittiness of bad do-overs of the original films that were much better. But anyway, so you got that. I was disappointed in that. Um, he gets killed, though. Her boyfriend gets killed in kind of an interesting way. Jason's, like, stabbing him up to the floor, to the ground, or up to the floor. I mean, and it's kind of a cool scene, just, like, seeing the machete come up through the floor like that. And he stabs the shit out of him, kills him, pulls him down, like, some fucking trap door he's got. That was decent. Um, I enjoyed that kill. She gets away. Um, Jason kills the dude in the bar trap by hitting him in the head with a machete. That was decent. Uh, that was okay. But it's kind of like CGI. I mean, well, it is CGI, so I didn't like that. So fuck that. And Jason comes charging at her, and he's like, I'm getting ready to hit her. And then the screen just cuts away, and you see the letters Friday the 13th pop up. And uh, that's a really cool way to open the film. That's a cool way to do it. This opening is, is cool. And uh, you get to the next group of teenagers here now. You get like this Travis Van Winkle guy. His character's name is Trent. He plays a typical asshole, like so over the top dickwad. Well, not so much over the top, but he's just like a typical asshole. That's pretty much his entire character, the asshole. Uh, and you got Danielle Panabaker, who plays like the virgin girl, who actually gets killed in the movie, so that actually surprised me. They tried to pull what they tried to pull a new one there with us, They're, like surprising us that the virgin girl gets killed, or the girl you thought. Well, it's not really new. I mean, like the character you think that's gonna survive ends up dying. That's not new. It was done in like fucking Psycho, but here I, I was actually surprised and actually thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> exhale the rest of the shittiness though of the movie out so I can remember everything <laughs> else that happens it's not so good but uh, you got Iron Yu in the film who plays a character named Chewy I believe he's mm, he's decently entertaining he's funny and a lot of times when he sees Jason he's got like a fucking hockey stick in his hand he's like here buddy uh, this uh, you looking for this to complete your outfit he sees him in a garage I thought that was funny 
Chase like grabs him and fucking shoves a screwdriver through his neck. That was okay. That was decently entertaining. That was a cool, decent death. His friend though like gets in a fight with Jason down there in the garage and like hits him with a fucking poker and says, "Take that motherfucker." That reminds me too much of like Busta Rhymes from Halloween Resurrection. Jason picks up an axe though and like fucking swings it like straight into the guy, like to his back, and he's like using him as bait to get everybody else out of the house and to come and like you know so he can kill them. That was decent, but he turns the guy around and throws him down like on his back and on his thing of wood and like the axe comes through his chest it was like shitty CGI so I'm like eh I don't want CGI in a Jason movie fuck that shit um and the film feels too polished this like the look of the film and everything just feels too like you know too polished and everything it doesn't have the look of like the low budget you know uh realistic look of like the Friday 13th the first one and well the first well you can even say the first three really um <clears throat> so I miss that but um yeah, uh, the character Trent, he, like, cheats on his girlfriend, he's, like, fucking his girl with big tits, and she keeps talking about how stupendous her tits are, and I thought that was funny, stupendous tits is funny, this film is stupendous, stupendously shitty, but anyway, I thought that was funny, and they said stupendous tits, that was, that was funny, the way how he just said that, but, uh, he goes on and on about how great her tits are for too long for me, and the character, like, that Jason's keeping, like, hostage, Amanda Rigetti's character, Whitney is the character's name, keeping her hostage, she manages to get away and, like, makes it really far, but then she doesn't really do anything or go through anything, and Jason just catches her, and I'm like, okay, that just seemed kind of useless, like, her whole point of, like, getting away, you could have done more with that, but he just catches her, and that's it, just takes her right back, so, fuck that shit, another drink. <clears throat> I better set this shit now before I get drunk from the end of this. But anyway, um, so you got that. I thought that was shitty. I thought that was stupid. She just gets caught right again. Um, you get a lot of stupid comedy. This film tries to play stuff seriously, but you get like this character in here is like this redneck dude, and it just comes off so fucking stupid. Like the way it's played, his character is just the comedy that he gives off is like I'll I'll, I'll, agree, I'll say though one line he's got I did find really funny, like uh. Jared Padalecki's character Clay like comes up to him and like tries to give him a picture of his sister so he can uh, see if he's seen her and then like turns around the dude jumps around and goes fucking lucky there stretch but came uh, she's like a second away from hitting I was a second away from hitting the start button on the whoop ass machine boy or something like that <laughs> that was so funny I love that I thought that was hilarious um but this character feels so out of place in this film you get like a crazy Ralph like fucking wannabe character um, who, like, she's like an old lady, and she's like talking to Clay, and he's uh, he's like, you see my sister, and she's like, he's like, she's missing, and she goes, she ain't missing, she dead. People go missing around here, they gone for good. No, that's that's it. You never see her again. And I'm like, so such a weak representation of the crazy Ralph, crazy Ralph character from the first film, who I just found more interesting and found that had cooler lines. And it's just kind of thrown away here. I hated that. Um. The, uh, the Bree character's stupendous tits. I'll just call her tits. Tits gets killed. Jason like, makes into the house that they're all in. Grabs her and throws her on like, some fucking deer antlers like on the on the door. Uh, deer looking antlers on the door. That was okay death. Uh, the asshole guy, uh, Trent, he manages the... Uh, well, you got three characters left for... Well, you got four characters left pretty much. And uh, you got Jared Padalecki. Kind of toward, well, towards the end of the film, you got four characters left. Jared Padalecki who's Clay. Um, you got Danielle Panabaker and you got Trent, the fucking asshole guy. They make it out in the woods. Trent thinks that Jason might be driving a vehicle or whatever, and I'm like, okay. Um, but I guess because you know he has, he doesn't really know anything about Jason. He doesn't know that the, Jason can't drive or whatever. So so it's a decent. You get a cool kill scene here. I like this one. Jason comes up behind him, fucking stabs him to the back with a machete, lifts him up on it like each end. It's like shaking him around like that. Pulls that out of him and then fucking slams him on the back with some wrecker. On these uh, things sticking out of the back of this wrecker that go through like every different parts of his body. That was cool. I like that. That was a cool kill scene. Um, you, like I said, you get the scene where Jason kills one of the guys with a fucking bow and arrow, shoots him through the head. That was cool. I like that. Um, just a second. I'm going to stretch my legs out here. Sorry about that. Uh, it's just that I'm all over the place with this review because this film I just don't like it at all, and I, it took me, it took me like kind of a little bit of force to set through it. It's not the worst like refuck I've ever seen. It's better than the refuck of a Nightmare on Elm Street. That one is just fucking atrocious. Like you couldn't, 
it's going to take everything I got to sit through that one when I do the reviews for the Nightmare on Elm Street films, which I'm doing them next. It's going to take everything I got to sit through that film when I get to it. But as for the far as this film goes, it's not as good as the not as good as the refuck of Halloween, which I don't even care too much for that one. But it's is a passable two star film. It's slightly better than Jason X, not by much. Better than Jason Takes Manhattan, and it's better than Friday Thirteenth Part Five. But it's not better than any of the others. But anyway, so you got a. Uh, well, that's how Trent gets killed and other two characters. Well, Danielle Patterbaker gets killed at the end. She's like the virgin girl, so it surprised me that she died. And she gets fucking just like, well, she just gets casually killed, though, which I, that's what really surprised me. She gets stabbed at the back by Jason with his machete and like, comes out her chest at the end of it when they're all in like Jason's underground tunnels. Well, when the third and Jason, un, well, when she and Claire is in, un, in, in fucking Jason's underground tunnel, I had trouble spitting out the shittiness, you know, spitting out the shittiness of the underground tunnel. Because I find that idea so fucking stupid. Underground tunnels, I should say. But anyway. So she's dead. Uh, Clay saves Whitney. Then he gets her loose. Or she gets loose. So it's just her and him now. Uh, Clay gets the shit beat out of him by Jason. Gets his head like knocked into these windows of the school bus. And I'm thinking, well, shouldn't he be dead? Uh, but uh, he survives. And him and Jason have like a little fight at the end. Well... Uh, Whitney, the character Whitney, uh, fucking kicks Jason and goes, fuck you, and I'm like, okay, knocks him down in this hole, and she takes off, and her and, uh, Clay make it in, like, this little barn, and, uh, they're in there, Jason shows up, gets in a little fight with, uh, with Clay, he swings, like, a pickaxe axe, and pickaxe towards him, and Jason dodges it, I thought that was decent, like, the way, you know, Jason dodges stuff and everything, just doesn't take the hits, but, uh, <clears throat> just so Jason dodges it, um, he gets to fight with Clay, gets ready to kill him, uh, Whitney shows up pretending to be Jason's mom and distracts him for a minute, but at the same time I'm thinking he knows she's not his mom, so how does it, how does this work against him, but whatever, so Jason gets distracted, Clay puts a bar trap on him, it fucking, the chain is like inside this, uh, uh, fucking grinder and is pulling him into it, um, and then you get the worst line in the history of Friday the 13th, and one of the worst lines I've heard in a horror film, where Whitney fucking jerks up the Jason's machete, she, well, gets it up, I mean, and she's got in her hands, and she goes, Jason, say hi to mommy, in hell, and fucking stabs him in the chest, that was one of the worst lines in, like, film history that I've heard, and not just film history, but horror film history, I hated that shit, could not stand it to this day, I hate it, um, this is only, like, a passable two-star film, there's nothing great about this film at all, and in the ending for the film, well, the, like I was talking about the hill, like, how Jason gets his mask in the film is stupid as well. Like, the hillbilly guy's, like, talking, like, to this mannequin about how much he wants to fuck it and everything, and Jason shows up behind him, like, slits his throat, and, like, right there sitting is the Jason hockey mask. I'm like, I thought it was, like, cooler how he got it from the character Shelly in part three, how he gets it here from, like, this hillbilly guy who fucks mannequins or whatever is, like, fucking stupid. Or gets it from the place that he's hanging out at or working at or whatever. That's just fucking stupid to me. But whatever. <clears throat> so Jason gets his hockey mask. Kind of a decent scene, though. Like, when he puts it on, he, like, looks in the mirror, and it's, like, an iconic look. I mean, he, uh, he like, well, he loves his look, and, of course, the look is iconic. And you hear, like, ch 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 playing, which is pretty cool. Um, Jason shoots, well, Jason shot that one guy in the fucking head with an arrow. That was neat. And then the boat that the dude was driving, like, he crashes into his girlfriend who was in the water, hits her in the head. And that was, that was decent. She was, he was, like, taking her water skin, and she was water skin topless. So you see some titties. That's fine. I, it's fine with me. I'm sure it's fine with everybody else, too. But, <laughs> so she gets, she swims underneath the dock. And she's like, and Jason's like standing over top of it, and he takes the machete and stabs it down between the dock into her head. That's how she dies. Okay, okay, scene. But the ending of this film is so fucking lazy. Um, it tries to like have a jump ending, like a shock ending, like the original Fire 13th, but this one just comes off as a cliche. For some reason, after they think they've killed Jason, they fucking take him to like this dock and just dump him off and dump him into by his body into the water to the lake. I'm like, why? Why the fuck would you do that? Why? Why'd you take him all the way there? Why didn't you just leave and go home? But whatever. So they dump him into the water. It, I mean, the scene may be a dream, but if it is, it never gives any indication that it is, really. Well, it gives a little bit of indication, but it, where it just goes straight into it, it doesn't give too much. From the last scene, it just goes straight into this one, so it doesn't give too much indication. But it very well could be. But even if it's a dream, it's a fucking stupid ending dream for the movie. I mean, it's still a stupid way to end the movie. Um, and they're sitting there on the dock or whatever, and... Uh, Clay starts walking towards Whitney, and Jason just fucking bursts out of it like torture and reaches to grab her, and then it's over. It just ends like that on a big cliche, like, whoop, Jason's still alive, ho, 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 didn't see that one coming, did you? And I'm like, 
That's so fucking stupid. Why does this film exist? There's no reason for this film to exist other than money. It's not a bad movie, but it's just like an oh, barely okay movie. There's no reason for the film to exist. It's just like the almighty dollar. That's it. That's the only purpose that this film is here. Uh, after I'm done with this review, I'll be letting a friend of mine uh, give his like write up on the films and what he thinks about them, just like I did for the Halloween films, where I let a friend of mine, you know, give his opinion on the films. I'll just go ahead and give my write up on these films here. Um, the original film Friday the 13th, I love, love to death. And people say you can't compare this film to the original Friday the 13th because it's kind of unfair. So I'll compare it to Friday the 13th Part Two. Friday the 13th Part Two, much better film. Friday the 13th, Friday the 13th Part Three, better film. Friday the 13th Part Four, better film. Friday the 13th Part Five, slightly weaker film. Um, Friday the 13th Part Six, much better film. Friday the 13th Part Seven, better film. Eight, weaker film. Nine, better film. Ten, barely, barely weaker film than this one. But uh, this film still, still sucks. Well, it doesn't suck, but I want to say it sucks because even though it's just an okay film, it still has no purpose of existing in <laughs> at all. So that's an okay film. I recommend rental. Do not buy this film at all. There's just no reason for it. Like I said, more with like the stupid shit, like they don't know how to write teenagers. You got the character who's like Chewie's friend in the film. He likes gets rid of Jack off in his friend's house. And I'm like, okay, what anybody just randomly if some guy was like friend of mine was like jacking off in my house or whatever. That was kinda weird. It just doesn't seem like something somebody would do in their friend's house, but whatever. Um, maybe they do. I don't know. If they gotta masturbate, they gotta masturbate, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, this is, I want to say it's a sucky film, but it's not. It's just a weak film that has no purpose of existing and no purpose of ever being made other than money. Um, as far as the franchise goes, I love the Jason franchise. Uh, the Friday 13th franchise, I mean. I love the character of Jason and Mrs. Voorhees. Um, what they can do after this, it's been a long time since this film, or at least a while. I don't see them like making a sequel to this film. I don't think they will. They might. I don't know. I would love to see a, a Jason film that takes place during winter. That would be decent for me. I'd like that. And fucking bring in Jason's dad. Give us some information on Jason's dad. For fuck's sake. Do something with that character. Because he's never been used before. He's untapped potential people. Do something with him. Uh, do something new. But anyway. Um, like as far as the franchise goes. I love the franchise. It's better than the Halloween franchise as a whole, and it's also better than Texas Chainsaw Massacre and uh, Child's Play. Um, I'll see you guys again with, I, well, I'll probably do a tribute video after this video uh, before I head into A Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, kind of like I did with Halloween before I head in, before I went into Friday the 13th, I did like a Wes Craven tribute video. I'm not sure what, tri what character or movie franchise I'll do a tribute for, but uh, I guess we'll wait and see. But uh, I'll go ahead and let my friend take over. You'll see a jump cut here, and then he'll come in and give his overview of this franchise. So I'll see you guys again with the first Nightmare on Elm Street review. Hello, everyone. It's Jason Voorhees here to offer my opinion on these aw these awesome films which star me. People think it may be easy acting behind the hockey mask, but you have to pull out a lot of emotions and emotion steps. And it's hard to act behind hockey mask, but I still do a good job because I Jason. First, Friday the 13th film, the classic, I'm not in it much, I dead in film. You try to find out who the killer is, it's a mystery, baby. You don't know who killer is, but turns out it's Mrs. Voorhees. She my mommy, she killing people for revenge, it's for my death. She gets head chopped off at in the film, mommy, I miss you. Second film, I come back for revenge for mommy, and to kill people who are in my territory. I have sack on head, my sack, it looks very interesting, very cool, I like the one I hold got out, I prefer hockey mask, in part 3 I come back with hockey mask, oh as for rating for number 4, I just give it 4 stars, I give 1 4 stars, 3 4 stars, 5 4 stars, 6 4 stars, we'll wait 5, fuck that movie, uh, uh, 6 4 stars, 7 4 stars, 8 4 stars, 9 4 stars, 10 4 stars, shit stain remake 4 stars, but anyway, now to explain why I give all these films such good ratings, except for number 5. Number 2, or oh, back to what I was saying, I have Sack on Head with one eye hole cut out. I'm not really in the, uh, well, I'm in the film a lot, but it's more of a suspense-driven film and not me really being iconic and walking around all the time and looking cool with the mask. Uh, but I still like the Sack. You get me in the film a lot, though. I double impale two people in a really cool, entertaining scene. 
is really awesome. At the end, Jenny tricks my ass though and gets the better of me, but tends to be my mommy, hits me with machete, takes me out. Number three, I come back, I get hockey mask now, I look really cool just like I do now, I have hockey mask now, I shoot spear gun into chick's eye, it looks really cool, at the end of the film, I get distracted by a biker who somehow comes back from dead, but Jenny, I mean, I, was such, I almost said fucking Jenny, I get these characters confused sometimes who I work with because I work with so many famous people, I meant to say Chris, Chris hits me in the head with axe, which caused me to go in Frankenstein mode, then fall down in front of camera, part 4, I come back, I get killed by Corey fucking Feldman, Fell dog, what the fuck is your problem, he takes me out with machete to head, which is a pretty entertaining scene and a cool way to go out, I go down with machete to head, I go out like a really tough, you know, serial killer, I'm, I come off as like a really tough, you know, type no shit kind of powerhouse guy in these films, but in real life, I really gentle man, I, part 5, I'm not in part 5, part 5, really lazy shitty film, we skip that one, we go to number 6, I come back super zombie, I super zombie now, I punch out hearts, really entertaining, number 6, at the end of it, I get uh, tied with chain around my neck and little pussy rock, weighs me down to the lake floor, little pussy rock, I don't know how it holds me down there, but it does, so fuck it, I still give it 4 stars, as I said, Number seven, I get brought back by tele conveniently the place teleconnected girl who comes to lake at the right time brings me back to life. You get the cool action scene at the end of the film when I duke it out with her. The action scene is really good and I want to make sure that the fans are pleased. Or the fans are pleased that in the film with this base with this with this basic awesome epic of an action battle between me and Tina, the telekinetic girl. She elects recruits me at end her father comes back out of water. He not look decayed though, I don't know why. Fuck it, that's the writers. He comes back, pulls me back into the water. Number eight, uh, this movie makes no fucking sense, but I in it still and I get hit by con toxic waste for some reason that conveniently floods the sewers every night at midnight. I don't know why, but it's still fucking cool cool because you know I'm Jason and I'm still you know killing people so they get some interesting value in this film and it's still slightly entertaining and plus well I knock a guy's head off in the film so automatic four stars I come back number nine Jason goes to hell I little parasitic worm I don't know why I parasitic worm but it's still cool because you know maybe if they give the worm I like a little hockey mask on like the, the face of the worm it might be cooler but I come back at the end of film to increase like value of film and I'm back at the end of film and I get to bear hug a bounty hunter and then plus you get Freddy Krueger who cameos at the end of my film for the ultimate match off between me and the Krueger you, you get Freddy vs Jason chronologically taking place next I get to fight with Freddy Krueger I take on the Kruger, Kruger tries to do ninja moves to get the better of me, but I like tank, I keep calming, and I manage to overpower him, I have head at in the film as trophy, I come back Jason X, I now get cybernetic upgrade, I am a cybernetic organism, living tissue over metal endoskeleton, sorry wrong movie, but now I am cybernetic, I'm uber Jason baby. I'm killing people, I get burned up at in the film, like shooting star into the Earth's atmosphere. I come back again, really shitty Michael Bay remake or refock, whichever you want to call it. But I still in film. I'm more like Rambo here. I use me conning. This thinky Jason thinky. I kill people here. I shoot arrow into people's head. I really cool. I look cool. I move faster now. Because I cunning, you know, smarter Jason, smarter. I kill people really fast and it's really fun. But at end the film, I get tricked once again by a similar way that Jenny tricked me in part two, except shittier, with shittier actor. But I get tricked and killed. But luckily, they take my body all the way to the lake conveniently and dump me in the water. I come back one last jump scare. I come back for revenge against woman who thinks she could trick me. I come, uh, you think me dead, of course I'm going to come back later in another film, another sequel eventually will be made, hopefully they will introduce my father, who I don't know who he is, because I've never heard word of him, he might be Sylvester Stallone, I'm not sure, maybe I get to be in one of the Expendables films, I can help them take on Antonio Banderas and Mel Gibson in Expendables 3, it could be really entertaining, you could get to see me flex me action muscles, 
The action muscles, baby, action muscles. You can get to see me do shit like that. Maybe see me do a couple backflips. I could have an entertaining fight scene with Jet Li. It could be really cool. I might even get to act alongside Schwarzenegger. That could be really cool. Hopefully you'll see me in my new film coming up sometime soon. Uh, fucking roses are red, violets are blue. I'm gonna slash you. How about you? That should be a really entertaining film, and we're hoping to make it into a musical comedy. So we'll wait and see how that pans out. But until my next film, I hope you enjoy seeing all the films I've put so much work into. And I'll see you guys again with my next film. Just to end this video here, I just want to end it with... I know you didn't think I could do that really good, did you? I'm obviously the one who does the sound effects for all of those fucking movies. So I'll see you guys again with my next movie.